Hi everybody, Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying the Tabori snake um, it's a great pattern originally I kind of devised a mullet pattern I believe for striped bass but I mean it's full of movement you can put a weed guard on it, it's a great bass fly I'm sure it works for snook and all that as well the deer hair head keeps it sort of neutral, neutrally buoyant but working the making the tail work as well because it creates turbulence. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who wants to support the channel. Join the monthly fly tie-in meetings as well as being entered into the giveaways. So I've got my hook my vice. This is a size 3 uh, and it's a Gamakatsu SC15. I quite like this shape of hook. Um, for this fly, you've got plenty of gape, the stinger style point and the shape of the bend lends itself to the pattern quite well, um, especially I'm going to make it non-fouling. So I've run on some GSP 100 as my thread and I'm going to get some black ostrich herring. Obviously you can tie this in different colours. Um, white, black, grey, white chartreuse, black chartreuse, black and red, black and purple, white and olive, they're all good. So I've grabbed some of my ostrich here, over here I've got oh, seven or eight herrows here. And I'm going to like, measure a tail Maybe about three hook lengths of the back. I'll tie that in. Right at the start of the bend. Take two or three wraps over that. I'll just tie over the top. Right, you're using the GSP's only 100 denier. It's very strong but very thin, so you can take the extra wraps without too much trouble. And they're locked in. I'm going to get some flash. This is um, Sabai. It's tinsel here. It's a bit. It's like a flash about, but it's it's very very limp. Um, and I've got this sort of black and it's supposed to be black and purple, but it's kind of pinky. It's more of a pinky purple. So we'll grab ten strands here. That make sure my ends are sort of tapered and uneven. Tie that in. on top, and then much the same. This here's too long to tie in as you normally would double. So I'm just doubling the tips, folding it back, and then I can set this aside for my next fly. Just moisten it, set it in the desk, and you've still got that. You've still folded your butts, so it will never pull out. And I'll grab another clump of ostrich hair, same size, same amount. I mean, maybe slightly more if you want. Just tie that in, much as you did before. Fold the butts. Just put the tail out of the way. Trim it. Now, this is a very tangle prone fly, um, so what I like to do is post. <clears throat> post this like a parachute and I'm going to come up in an open spiral a shank length 
and just come back then to tighten everything up. And then tie on top, <coughs> excuse me, tie on top so that it's sticking at the back. The marabou will cover this, right? Um, and it won't affect how the fly swims. The fly's still going to swim amazingly, but it won't tangle. I mean, or it won't tangle nearly as much. Got to come in with some head cement. You could use UV resin, I suppose. Um, I'm just going to get that in there and on my thread wraps as well. And because you've posted it, it doesn't wick up into the tail. Now I'm going to get a piece of black marabou and I'm using an extra select because it's a bit longer than a blood in the and the fibre, if I was going smaller, I could get away with a blood quill, but um, in this case, with a bigger fly, I'm having to use this. <coughs> so, just taking the tip, it's a bit fiddly at first, the marabou, when, you, when you're not used to it, but just moisten the tip, I'll tie that in. I'll just take that away. Then I'll get my hackle pliers. And then, same again, just wet your finger. Sort of fold that. And then just wrap it. Don't worry too much about the feather twisting. Just keep doubling the the, the fibres and wind. There's no, you cannot stop the feather twisting. Basically, um, that is going to happen. The barbules are going to get caught in the. Oops, are going to get caught in the hook gap. You just you fix that after. So I'm coming up to where the stem starts to get a bit stiff. Yeah, I cut I cut it just above where it was flexible. So I'll tie it there, catch it in. These tight turns. Now just pull the fibres of the marabou to the front and that will take all the twist out and they'll stand perfectly and then you can draw them gently back just wrap back until you hit the, you'll feel you'll hit the sort of step the, the step of the tie and everything else and that's you <clears throat> and then just tidy everything up. Right. In order for this to go smoothly, you need to flatten out any bumps. Um, with your tie and thread, right? There will be some bumps there from the the stem of the marabou plume. You need to flatten them out, out so that the hair can spin. So, first I'm going to tie in my collar. Just 
Just maybe change the colour so you can see it better. Right. Collar. It's all dear belly here. Take a good clump. You've got to lose some anyway. And just make sure you clean out the underfur. This is good hair. There's not much in the way of underfur in it. But the, the underfur is what always gives people problems. Um, it's underfur that will break your thread. They're quite kind of sharp wee hairs. It will stop it spinning. And it will cause problems. So I'm just getting this stacked. <clears throat> I've got a good bunch. I've got as much as I can put in this large stacker. Now I just changed the colour basically so you could see this a bit better. But I mean black and purple is a, a good combination. There are some broken tips. And here I'm just If you're only that fussy, but I think it's better to take them away. Length of this halfway into the marabou, right? So see how much hair you need. You don't want the butts of this in the head, right? Just sort of squeeze it down onto the shank, right? It's I've got this. It's not just directly on top. It's sort of around the top half of the shank there. Take three turns, put it tight. Come on at these cut ends. And then you've got a lovely collar. If you want, you can sort of help it around, but you don't really need to. Right. The reason, the reason for doing this is the first bunch that you spin, you don't want this here. This here's because you want this kind of lying down. The butt ends are really pointing forward rather than sticking up like they would if you spun it. Um, so it fights the fights the spun bunch of hair. And what we'll do is just protecting everything always by cement. And you'll be amazed at the difference this makes to the durability of the fly. Deer hair is not the toughest stuff, especially in the salt water. Um, and but that wee bit of cement every time does make a significant difference to the durability of the fly. Which same again, I'm just going to grab another bunch of deer here. Make sure it's nice and clean. I'm going to put the butts to the back so that it's easier for me when I'm trimming. I don't see the, so I don't cut the collar. Three wraps of thread, nice and loose, put tight. Then you can just follow around, tightening. And it will stop moving. Let's sweep it back, nice and tight. Get a few wraps of thread in front. Bring your thread halfway now. 
I'm halfway between the eye and that last tie in. And you can see hopefully how that lies back. I don't know how well it picks it up. But you can see how it, it, it does lie back. That the the butt pieces here lie back against that collar, giving you a really nice, let's sort of continuous head. <coughs> and it's just the same again. Another bunch of hair. Same, clean out the butts. Offer it in. One, two, three. Put it tight. Just follow up with the thread. Just have a quick look, make sure it's all the way around. Same again, pull in it and back. Get your black pen and just touch that thread if it bothers you. Then you're ready to cut it. No, I hate cutting these in the vise. Just take it out and I'll keep it in the frame as best I can. So I just use scissors, right? This is you don't you don't need to use a razor blade for this because it's quite a loose head. It's no it's not really tight, um, and I'm just going to come along the belly first, nice flat flat cut. So I've got like this, right? Nice exposed open hook gape. And then I'm just got to come up and trim a sort of blunt cigar shape, really. I mean, it's up to yourself, really, what shape you like. Um, I like it to be kind of rounder, to push a bit more water, and really make the tail kick. I always think that if you, when you see flies, this like the Tabori snake or similar patterns, and the the heads like a pencil tip or something, or like a wee narrow cone, it sort of defeats the purpose. Um, you know, you, you've got a nice big water pushing head. That makes it, and it makes the tail move. If you feel that you don't want the fly to be that buoyant, then fine. Um, what I would suggest is use less deer hair and still keep the kind of bulky shape. Uh, you know, two sparser bunches don't push it back as far. I mean, that head there is not at all tight. That I've tied. Because I don't want the fly tail to float, I want it to be neutral. And 
Now to toughen things up, I've got to get some liquid fusion. Just got to, and I'm just going to push it into the the belly. And I'm going to let really work it in with the nozzle, get it right into the hair so that it can soak into that thread as well. Right. You want to make contact with the, the thread in the hook shank. And then a wee toothpick. And I'll just sort of roll it. And smooth that that hair kind of back to where it was sitting before I disturbed it with the nozzle. And there you go. That's your Tabori snake. If you want to, you can come in and trim it again after the after the glue's dry. Get a good four hours. But that's it. It's a deadly pattern, right? Like. I mean, I'm sure you could confidently throw this at a tarpon, snook, any of the saltwater bass species, and then in fresh water as well for a whole range of predators, just change the colour. So, I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like button, and I'll see you for another video. Take guys. Bye.